tell you what I'm loving today. We're getting some great laughs from some of our guests. We are. And our next guest <laughs> is one of the most in-demand comedians in the country. I've been thinking lately, and I don't make a habit of that. Fiona O'Loughlin's sharp wit and brutal delivery never disappoints. Apparently I told one of my best friends that her baby looked like Laurie Oaks and... Um... <laughs> She's been delighting audiences for almost two decades, but it hasn't always been smooth sailing for the comedian. Oh, here's the thing, I am an alcoholic. Her struggles with alcoholism almost derailed her career and broke apart her family. If I went on stage without those two little vodkas, I can't do it, because um, I've never done it without it. Since coming to terms with her battle with the bottle, Fiona has never looked back and just last year became queen of the jungle on I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. It's Fiona! <laughs> oh, yes, remember that. Now, funny woman Fiona O'Loughlin is bringing her unvarnished and hilarious honesty back to the stage for a brand new tour, and we are delighted to say she joins us now in the studio. Good morning to you. Good morning, ladies. You are... Um, you are just on a mission, from what I can read. You are... Th this, is, this, is, this is a new adventure, if you like, for you. Yeah, it is. It's a new era yeah. for me. And how does that feel? Well, it, look, to be honest, I've just had a bit of an awkward uh, situation in the, um, in the dressing room with oh. Elizabeth. I didn't know where to look, because <laughs> Sam didn't go to New Zealand. He's with me now. Oh! <laughs> is that the truth? <laughs> Goodness me! Oh! Wow! So that's hot off and the press. She and throws a grenade <laughs> into Married at First Sight. Wow. No, it does feel like a new beginning. <laughs> In more ways than one. I don't know. It's um, to get two bites of the showbiz, you know, apple is pretty cool. Mm. I, I thought I was dead in the water, you know. Elaborate on that. Why? Well, because I blew my life up, mm. pretty much. Um, you're and referring to, to alcoholism? Un, yeah, untreated alcoholism. Yeah. And apparently, um, uh, we're the hardest nuts to crack, middle-aged women. Mm. But, uh, and my poor mother, if she hears me talking about my alcoholism one more time, she's going to turn into one herself, I think. <laughs> but she... So does she have the view of the generation that you just don't talk about it? Or? No, no, she's been absolutely fabulous. But the reason I do continue to talk about it is in case there's someone out there mm. like mm. not not that I'm a saint at, at all but I just get something that I don't think we're understanding mm. and that is that as long as there is going to be you know as long as there's alcohol there will always be alcoholics mm. there's a certain amount of us that this stuff is poison to. Mm. And so I don't know why we have to wait till the shame and horror sets in, which is a side effect of being an active alcoholic. Mm. If I reckon kids at school should hear that, look, 90% of the population will be able to handle this stuff, but... But there's a core group there, that won't. There's a core group that won't, nor will ever be able to. But can I also just touch on, we discussed this yesterday when I interviewed Jane Carroll about her book, Accidental Feminists. There is a group of women who are referred to as the sandwich generation, who are turning to alcohol in greater numbers than ever before because they feel invisible and they are caught between caring for parents, caring for children, running a house, holding down a job, and the booze is just their, their outlet. And we're not talking enough about it, I don't think. Yeah, well, that would be not under my kind of um, skill set or knowledge because that's unhealthy drinking, you know, which is not good for you, but... Mm. It, I think it's quite separate to waking up in the morning and needing, needing a drink, a, needing yeah. a vodka when, when to it's steady. Of, yeah. Yeah. And, and it's a common thread that a lot of comedians do, you know, draw on alcohol, rely on it. But yeah. do you draw on your experiences for comedy? Because obviously, always, what's ever in front of me is what I talk about. Yeah. So that was in the last show, Gap Year, and now this new show. No, it, I'm not discussing. So what are it. you doing in this show? Well, I'm, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite sure. Work in progress. <laughs> no, it's called Fiona, Fiona O'Loughlin Addresses the Nation. So it's basically... Sounds like you're running for office. Yeah, I know. And that's kind of a hook because <laughs> I would never run for office. I mean, I'm, politics just... I'm glazing now. But just what do you think about, about our politicians? Because, mm. I mean, you've got to laugh at them because otherwise you'd be it's you almost know, bundled too, up in it, a... It's a... almost too crazy now <laughs> to laugh. I mean, I do enjoy American politics because, like, we've got, um, like, an evil Homer Simpson in the White House <laughs> and that's kind of fun <laughs> to watch. Plenty of fodder. <laughs> yeah. But what this show, for me, is I kind of... I'm thinking if I were to pitch it, it would to be kind of this... 
the smart mouth Oprah. You know, I'm 55. I've, I've, I've lived a life mm -hmm. and I've got some tips that are worthy tips. I think we need to village up our lives more. Mm -hmm. You know, for instance, I moved from Alice Springs to Collins Street, which is ridiculous. In Melbourne. <laughs> yeah, in Melbourne. Culture shock. But what you can do, like I went and made friends with the girl at the IGA, you know, and, or not friends, but found out her name and mm. had a chat every day. And this came in very handy because when Tess, my daughter, told me she was pregnant, it was very early, and she said, you are not to tell, look at me, you are not to tell a living soul. And I'm like, well, I can, to myself, I said, well, I can go tell Shannon at the IGA. <laughs> <laughs> You've got an outlet. But do you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. To, so I will, I, I've got the basis of the show and it's what, it, it's kind of what I want to say about a lot of things, mm. uh, a smart mouth Oprah way of saying it. Uh. But now I've just got to gag it up. And that's actually the easy bit. It's, you... it's really important to find out what offends you, you know, what offends you or what excites you, what you're going to talk about, and, and then gag it up. It's oh, easy. Yeah. Well, yeah. We cannot wait to she see says. how it unfolds. <laughs> and we have all the information about your shows, all the details, where you can catch her, where you can get them before they sell out. So head to Fiona com.au for more info and we'll have it on our page as well. Oh, we thank indeed. you so much. Yeah. This is going to help. You but... are a very special brand of comedy. We love you. <laughs> thank, thank you, you so Fiona. much, Georgie. Hope to see you soon. Thank you for coming. Thanks, in. darling.